Hi everyone, Matt Watson here. So the Porsche 911 Turbo S is one of the quickest cars I have ever driven. In fact, I felt very smug when I managed to beat a Lamborghini Huracan Performante in a drag race with the old 911 Turbo S. However, Porsche has gone a bit on a new one and here's the car wow. Top 10 things you need to know about it. Let's start off by talking about the price. The new 911 Turbo S starts from £156,000 for the coupe or £165,000 for the cabriolet. Shut up and take my money! And that's before you start fitting any of Porsche's expensive options. Oh. To be fair, a Lamborghini Huracan Performante is more expensive still, though something like a BMW M8 competition is cheaper. So you pay your money, you takes your choice. If a Lamborghini Huracan Performante is a Pitbull Terrier, then the 911 Turbo S is a friendly Spaniel that's been given a mohawk haircut and a couple of Thug Life tattoos. At the front, it gets bigger air vents, but the real changes happen down the sides. The Turbo S rides lower than the standard 911, and it gets 20 mm wider wheel arches to stop its massive wheels spilling out of the sides like some horrendous kind of automotive muffin top. As standard, the 911 Turbo S gets 20 inch alloy wheels at the front and 21 inches at the rear. Now I can hear all the 911 fanboys going, I think you'll find Matthew, that's the exact same size that you also get on the normal 911 Carrera S. Mm, yeah. These are probably the same kind of people who moan at me for saying Porsche instead of Porsche. Anyway, rant over. Back to the Porsche. Turbo S, as its wheels are held on by big centre lock nuts instead of individual bolts, just like on a Formula One car. They even tell you which way to tighten them up in case you're a moron. And as well as the new idiot proof wheels, there's also a big air intake behind each of the doors like on all turbos since the 996. Plus, there's a new spoiler, some extra air vents in the bumper and four massive square exhaust pipes. Oh. As a company, Porsche likes to stick to tradition, and this extends to its engines. Just like the old 911 Turbo S, power comes from a 3.8 litre twin turbo flat six, though now it produces 650 horsepower, whereas in the old car, it only put out 580 horsepower. That's an increase of 70 horsepower, which interestingly, is the same amount of power an entry level Volkswagen up has. It now means the car has more power than an AMG GTR, a BMW M8 competition, and a Lamborghini Huracan Performante. So that drag race is definitely a foregone conclusion. That being the case, I'd like you lot to let me know of a four-way drag race you'd like me to set up with the new 911 Turbo S and three other cars. So comment below and I'll try to make it happen when the car's available. But horsepower isn't the whole story. The new Turbo S also produces a whopping 800 newton meters of torque. That's 50 newton meters more than the old GT2 RS has and a Lamborghini Aventador has. Porsche says the new 911 Turbo S can go from 0 to 60 in just 2.7 seconds, which is quicker than it takes me to say, slow down Matthew, you're going too quickly. Impressive. In fact, it means the car is quicker accelerating than even a Lamborghini Aventador or a McLaren 720S. No, sorry Porsche fanboys, it's still not as quick to 60 as the new Tesla Model S performance. The new Turbo S might have a chance against the Tesla once you get past 60 miles an hour though. You see it'll do 0 to 120 miles an hour in just 8.9 seconds. That's a whole second faster than the old car. And seeing as I've timed one of those at 10.3 seconds over the standing quarter mile, we could be looking at a sub 10 second car which is insane. The top speed of the new 911 Turbo S is exactly the same as the old one, so 205 miles an hour. But that does still mean it's one of the fastest four-seater cars in the world ever. Now, once again, you fanboys might be going, wait a minute, it's actually a two plus two. Well, yeah, yeah, it sort of is. But imagine doing 205 miles an hour in the back seats of a 911. Oh, that'd just be horrible. In the past, only turbo-powered Porsches were called turbo, but now it's become more of a trim level than anything because lots of 911s have turbos and they're not called turbo, whereas the Taycan, 
which doesn't even have an internal combustion engine to fit a turbo to, is available as a turbo. Make sense? Probably doesn't. Anyway, all you need to know is that this new Turbos Turbos are slightly bigger than the old Turbos Turbos. Turbos. They now also rotate in the opposite direction, which means a smoother airflow for better fuel air mixing. The new turbos use something called variable vane technology, so they can actually alter the angle of the turbine, so you can have it quite flat for immediate response and less lag, or at quite a steep angle for lots of boost pressure. Speaking of which, the turbos also have an electrically controlled wastegate to really manage that boost pressure, plus there's huge air intakes as well, so you can get maximum Power! Sorry. As we all know, two-wheel drive lets you do smoky burnouts. <laughs> that's a smoky one! And great big drifts. But nothing beats four-wheel drive off the line. So like all 911 turbos, it comes with four-wheel drive. But even with those cars, they are rear drive bias, so you can do skids in those as well if you want to. That's just the way Porsches are. You can even drift a Panamera Turbo E Hybrid. I was not expecting this. And a Taycan, if you wanna. And I would want to do that. And so should you. However, if you do get into trouble and you need the front end to really help you out, the all-wheel drive system can send 500 newton meters of torque forwards. Now that's more torque than an Audi RS3 has in total. What's more, the new Turbo S's front wheels are 42 millimetres wider than in the old car to help them deal with all that extra torque. And the rear wheels have been pushed out by 10 millimetres for added cornering stability. Mm. Well, that's all great if you live in the countryside or America, but if you live in England and in a city, you're gonna wanna watch out for width restrictors. Mm. There is no use building a high performance vehicle if it's got the aerodynamics of a shed because then it's not gonna go very fast, is it? Oh well, that sort of proved me wrong. Anyway, the new Turbo S does have lots of aero upgrades to help it stick to the road and slip through the air as smoothly as possible, more so than the normal 911. For a start, there's a taller rear spoiler than you get on the standard car, some special flaps in the front bumper that can close off to make the car more aerodynamic at high speeds, and even a pneumatic splitter that extends out of the bumper as you're going quicker. It sort of looks like a dog sticking its tongue out. Though it does mean that this new Turbo S produces 15% more downforce than the old 911 Turbo S. The Porsche 911 chassis setup has been reworked for the Turbo S to make it even better to drive, but there are plenty of upgrades available if you want to make it even sportier. More weight! More! First, there's a sport chassis option. Wait a minute. Does that mean that the range topping 911 doesn't have a sporty chassis as standard? I know, it's that classic German marketing trick of making the standard car not quite good enough, so you have to pay extra on essential options for the car to be all that it can be. The dirty buggers. Anyway, this upgrade includes 10 millimeters lower suspension and retuned active suspension management to make the 911 Turbo S feel even more agile. There's also an upgraded sports exhaust system with two massive pipes and adjustable flaps so you can choose between neighbor friendly quiet in the morning mode or death metal gig volume levels. Apart from a few badges, the Turbo S's interior is just the same as the normal 911. You've got lots of tech, some big screens. Yeah, it has a bit of a retro vibe going on but in a good way, you know, like an Apple Watch. You have an analog display on it, don't you? Not a digital one most of the time. You get the same 11-inch touchscreen as the normal 911 and analog rev counter that's flanked by two digital screens. The steering wheel, meanwhile, is lovely and thin and it doesn't get a weird flat bottom like most other fast sports cars. It's also fitted with a handy rotary control for changing the driving modes, so you don't have to fiddle about with the touchscreen. And the serious Porsche nerds among you will notice that the stitching on the 18-way adjustable seats matches that from the old 930 Turbo from 1975. And also the rest of the cabin is trimmed in carbon fibre, real leather and lots of metal trim. All of it real, so no need to bring the Carwow sticker Drew along when I review it. 
The new Porsche 911 Turbo S is also available as a convertible, if you like to feel the wind whipping through your toupee. Convertible models are usually heavier than their coupe equivalents, reason being that when you chop the roof off a car, you need to add in some extra bracing to stop it being all wobbly because you'll have lost some structural rigidity by not having that fixed roof there. And that extra bracing adds weight. Also, a folding roof mechanism, that adds weight as well. And that's why Porsche's folding roof mechanism is made using lightweight magnesium. Helps keep the weight down. As a result, the new 911 Turbo S Cabriolet can get from 0 to 60 miles an hour just 0.1 of a second slower than the coupe. So you can do it in 2.8 seconds, which is really, really impressive. Top speed is the same, 205 miles an hour. Now that is with the roof up. If you try to do it with the roof down, I think you get quite a lot of drag. So you probably wouldn't be able to go that fast. You can actually raise or lower the roof in just 12 seconds and it'll do at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour. The roof itself comes with a special soundproofing layer and heat insulation to make it just as comfortable as the hard top. And there's an extra wind deflector you can deploy in just two seconds to make sure you don't give your hairdo an accidental blow dry.